Hey brawlers, welcome back and or to my channel here. Um, so in this video I'll be taking a look at the official character handbook uh, that came out, I think at least uh, late December. Um, I know on Amazon I pre-ordered it and it uh, came a couple days ago in the mail. So I thought you should go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, but before I do, um, I just wanted to show off what I have for my new setup uh, here. Ah. So I can see um, I have, I now have uh, the Baku cores on the sides of my mat, along with the Dekas and um, the Maxis Dragonoid uh, for the back. And then I have here the uh, Baku storage cases as the wall. Um, the green one, the green Ventus one, um, is not out yet here in Canada uh, as a recording um, because it's released alongside with Armored Alliance. And we do not have that yet here in Canada. Um, I know America's slowly getting it, but we probably won't have it probably till like Christmas or maybe late summer of um, sometime this year. As of upload and recording, it is uh, January. Um, so yeah, so I got my back of storage cases there. Uh, then I have the two battle arena um, things there. Uh, also here in Canada, we do not have that um, that like um, that whatever whatever plastic uh, the the circled foldable one. It comes with like a, it's like in the five pack Walmart exclusive thing. I'm not sure if there's like th four Bakugan in there. Yeah, there's like, I think there's four Bakugan in that. Uh, it's only available at Walmarts in America so far. Um, so fortunately I don't have that yet, although I want it really bad because it, it's like the only Bakugan in it available. Um, there you got uh, Dra Pyrus, Dragonoid Core, uh, Darkest Nilius Core. Um, which you can get pretty much in anything, like the Baku storage cases there. Or, like, in singles or other three packs. Uh, but I know the one of the exclusive Bakugans in it is Aqua's Phaedrus Core. And I know that's uh, also uh, Ventus Vicerox Core, but I'm not entirely sure if that's exclusive to that or not. Um, but anywho. Then I have uh, the official game guide on top of there with... A uh, promo Bakugan from Toys R Us. That is... I think it's Aquas... Fangzor... Yeah, it's Aquas Fangzor. Um, and then, then uh, now, uh, on the clear storage case, I will be putting up uh, the character handbook with uh, Ventus Nilius. And then I have my limited edition Dragonoids there, along with uh, my Japanese Dragonoid right there. Uh, and then over there I have um, the Diamond Dragonoid Ultra 3-pack, uh, which I will be opening up sometime in the future. Not sure when, maybe when um, uh, maybe the, the rest of that wave is uh, officially out here. And... Um, and I've already opened them all, them all and reviewed it, or if I happen to find an extra one. Anywho, so on with the video uh, to take a look at the official uh, character handbook. Um, this is different from the gaming guide, as the gaming guide just um, teaches you about the actual game. Uh, and the character handbook just teaches you about the characters uh, pretty much just from the show. Um, so on the back here... Um, the fate of the world rests in your hands. Welcome to Bakugan Battle Planet. All right, then here, in the back, a new age is dawning, the age of Bakugan. Almost as soon as they arrived here on Earth, forces sprung to fight against these amazing creatures. Leading the effort to protect them and the planet is a group of kids just like you. Yeah, I'm a little bit old, but all right. I'm a veteran, uh, I'm a veteran brawler, if anything. Uh, now it's up to Bakugan brawlers everywhere to take up the fight. Brawlers just like you uncover the secrets of Bakugan, their, their human partners, and the world they inhabit in this guide all about Bakugan Battle Planet. 
All right, then we have the Nilius artwork. Uh, Spin Master 2020, all rights reserved. Back on Spin Master logo or trademarks of Spin Master LCD. Da, 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 da. Um, price is there. Scholastics Cartoon Network. Now it did. It does say 2020 in here. Yet I did buy it and get it in 2019. So I find that a little bit funny. Uh, I'm not sure if these are in stores yet. I haven't looked, but I know this is available on Amazon. Uh, because that's where I got this thing. Uh, then on the cover, it has the Awesome Ones Bakugan. All right, so let's take a look at this here. All right, then it has some of their secondary. We got both the Shuns secondary and tertiary Bakugan. Then we got uh, the Pythion, Sindius, and then we have Asato's uh, blah, 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 Serpentis. All right, there's Fate Ninja. Uh, I'm not gonna bother reading all this mumbo jumbo here, but the table of contents. Uh, so page five, welcome to Bakugan Battle Planet, 12 Battle Basics, 18 Factions, 28 the Heroes and their Bakugan, 60 the Villains and their Bakugan, and 82 a New Dimension. So let's look at this here. So we have Gortheon, this page. Oh, I thought I thought I thought my butt got dirty, but that's just him running in like the dirt or sand or something. Pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, so welcome to Bakugan Battle Planet. A new age is dawning, the age of Bakugan. When these amazing alien creatures appeared on our planet, they could not remember where they came from. They partnered with humans they trusted, and with their humans, they uh, they honed their battle strategies and skills. Almost as soon as the Bakugan appeared, evil forces sprang up. Forces determined to control, enslave, or destroy these mysterious creatures, leading the effort to protect the Bakugan, and the planet is a group of kids who befriend the Bakugan. Now it's up to Bakugan brawlers everywhere to take up the fight. Brawlers just like you. In this handbook, you'll learn the story of Battle Planet and how to spot the good guys and the bad guys. You'll learn about Bakugan and what they can do. And you'll learn how to help the team uncover the secrets of a hidden world they call the maze of <coughs> Australia. So what are you waiting for? Let's do this. Alright, so here's Dan with Drago. So the Great Collision. Basically episode one. Um, Alright. How did Bakugan enter our world? It all began 12 years ago, on the night of the Great Collision. Strange clouds rolled across the sky above Pinpoint Park in the town of Los Vomos. Lightning crashed, and the sky opened up. Mysterious light shot down, crashing into the ground below and creating a huge crater. Something else happened that very night. A boy named Dan Cusa was born. On his 12th birthday, he and his friends went to the site to make a video for the anniversary of the Great Collision. While they were there, their cell phones died at 12 years old and already a cell phone. You lucky son of a gun. Back when I was 12, psh, I don't have a cell phone. Didn't have one until I was, I don't know, like mid-high school or something. I don't know. Anywho. Where was I? Ah, yes. Lights appeared in the sky again, and they all heard an unusual word echoing around them. Bakugan, 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 Bakugan. Then strange swirling white and blue goop bubbled up from the ground and flowed around their feet. Dan reached down to touch the glowing substance, and a small red ball appeared in his hand. Then a creature emerged, a majestic red dragon-like beast with massive wings. The name is Dragonoid, the creature said, and I am your partner. From that day forward, Dan helped bring Bakugan to the world with the help of his friends. All right, that's page one. An awesome team from the awesome ones. The team started out as a group of friends, Dan Cuso, Leah Venegas, Winton Stiles, and their dog, Lightning who were famous for their funny videos on Linkster, 
But after the night when Dan discovered the first Bakugan Drago, everything changed. He and his friends became the team that introduced Bakugan to the world. Leo, Winton, and even Lightning quickly found Bakugan. They recorded themselves training with their Bakugan and battling each other. Kids around the world began to search for Bakugan and partner with them. As the fame of the, as the fame of their fame grew, some brawlers wanted to join them. The only one deemed worthy enough, Shun Kazami, who traveled all the way from Japan to join the team. Dan, Winton, Leah, Shun, and Lightning each bring different skills and different Bakugan to the team. Working together, they are the world's greatest hope for protecting Bakugan and solving the mysteries of where they came from. Alright, social media stars. As Trox is. Bakugan fans all over the world go to the team's channel on Linkster to view exciting battles, get tips on Bakugan training, and watch funny Bakugan videos and bloopers. The videos usually start with an idea or vision by Leah, who directs and films them with their drone camera. Dr 12 years old and they have phones and drones and all this stuff. When I was 12 years old, I was lucky enough to be able to go on the family computer and watch TV or something. Jeez. Kids are spoiled nowadays, that's all I'm saying. Lightning is always a bit is always a big hit who doesn't who doesn't love a cute duck? Especially one is an awesome Bakugan brawler. Fans also tune in to watch Dan Drago Dan and Drago defeat their opponents in action packed battles. For a while, Winton was popular for posting funny prank videos of his Bakugan Trox. Do not treat partnerships as a joke, Trox told Winton. Bakugan have, Bakugan have feelings too, but it wasn't until Trox deserted Winton that he realized how much he was hurting his Bakugan. Winton doesn't post prank videos of Trox anymore. Instead, he focuses on, his, on this dinosaur-like Bakugan's amazing battle skills. Battle Basics Drum up! When you hear someone shout these words, it means a Bakugan battle is about to begin. An enormous bubble, a drome, will rise up, surrounding the brawlers and anyone else who has a Bakugan that is with them. The drome keeps everyone outside the battle area safe. Whatever or whoever is inside the drome can receive damage, but the drome will provide protection from anything being permanently damaged. After the battle, the drum disappears and anything that was broken becomes fixed. The basic rules of Bakugan battle are pretty simple. Each Bakugan starts with a predetermined number of power points. This is their B power. Trainers take turns in striking their Bakugan to launch a move against their opponent's special abilities cause your opponent to lose points. Other kinds of moves can protect or heal your Bakugan when one of the Bakugan's points drops to zero, the other Bakugan wins. Inside the drum is the Hide Matrix, a, a floor made up of six-sided tiles called Bakukors. During a battle, some of these tiles light up. Brawlers can use the tiles to give their Bakugan more power points or to help them perform a special move by picking up the Bakukors and throwing them to their Bakugan. The main purpose of the Bakugan battles is for brawlers and their partners to have fun and practice their skills. That's what it's supposed to be anyway. There are evil forces out there who want to use Bakugan in their powers of them to, for them for their own gain. Luckily, Dan and his friends are trying to stop them. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Liam Page. Having a Bakugan partner. When a Bakugan enters our world, it chooses a human partner that it feels a connection with. A Bakugan will only choose a partner who was born after the Great Collision, which is why there are no adults who partner with their Bakugan, <coughs> except there are, because technology. Having a Bakugan partner is just like having a friend. Bakugan partners work closely together, but they also listen to each other and respect each other. A human can give a Bakugan a command in battle, but there is no rule that the Bakugan has to follow it. If a Bakugan is not treated kindly by its partner, the Bakugan will end the partnership. Mutual trust and respect is essential between a Bakugan and its brother, Leah. Bakugan Code a Bakugan, brother, a Bakugan brawler should always have the best interest of a Bakugan at heart. 
They all follow an unspoken code. Never ask your Bakugan to do anything bad. Never try to profit from your Bakugan. Never ask your Bakugan to do anything against its will. And always treat your Bakugan with kindness and respect. Real brawlers know one thing. They know when to Bakugan come first. Dan. Hmm. Alright, faction intros. What's your battle style? Are you practiced and pr precise? A master manipulator? Bold and daring? Or something else? Bakugan brawlers have partners whose attacks and skills match their own battle styles. Each style, uh, called a faction, is represented by a different color and symbol. In this section, you'll read about the different factions and then take a quiz to find out which one you belong to. So we got Pyrus, Ventus, Aurelis, Aquas, Heos, and Darkus. Um, Alright, so this uh, so now it just tells you about each faction before you take the quiz, I suppose. Alright, so Aquas, uh, color blue. We have Shonen Hydras. Uh, if you need some help developing a battle strat strategy, ask an Aquas Brawler. They are focused and precise. Aquas players will often take their time deciding on their next move, wait waiting for the perfect moment to strike. A fast-moving brawler such as a Pyrus and throw them off their game. Darkus, color black. Darkus Brawlers will use strategy to weaken your Bakugan and then strike when you least expect it. Some of them are hungry for power and will do whatever it takes to achieve the victory they crave. They are intense players who are very passionate about the game. Magnus Nilius. Chaos, color white. Patrix Leah. Chaos brothers are most comfortable when they are in control of the battle. They work to get ahead of their opponents using strategies and Baku cores. To a Chaos player, intelligent planning is more important than instinct. Pyrus, color red. Pyrus players have lots of energy and battle with aggressive moves. They will strike first and ask questions later. Their strategy is to pump their opponent with powerful attacks and to win through quick damage. Mm -hmm. Ventus, color green. Ventus is the color of nature and Ventus brawlers will use their natural surroundings to gain an advantage during a battle. Green is also the color of growth and Ventus, and Ventus brawlers will train hard so that their skills can grow quickly. Here, Orlis, color gold. Not much is known about Orlis Bakugan. Dan and his friends have encountered a mysterious golden bird Bakugan <coughs> who appears to be helpful. When they entered a strange dimension called the Maze of Vistroya, they battled a powerful Bakugan that also appears to be an Orlis. There's a good chance that the team will encounter more Orlis Bakugan in the future. I'm trying to orient uh, uh, Quiz. Which faction would you belong to? Circle your best answer to each question on the next page, then use the key at the end to figure out what kind of brawler you are. Aquas, Darkus, Chaos, Pyrus, or Ventus. Uh, no, I'm not going to go over this entirely, uh, but I am going to give you guys a good look at it. So if you want to uh, take the quiz yourself, you can. So we have one. Two. Three, four, five, here we got uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the results are here. Um, now this is pretty much pretty simple because if you, uh, or it's not simple, but I say it's fixed in a way, uh, because there's like no mixed. It has to be your results either has to be Aventus, Aquas, Pyrus, Chaos, or Darkus. Uh, that's because whichever one you circle in most, um, that's the result, and it's pretty much fixed. As like I can see here, pick a color: grass, 
pick a color, A is green, and then Brawler, Winton, you know, Trox, and then it's all in the same, same thing, like gardening is up there first, and here for like swimming, wave attack, it's all pretty fixed, in my opinion, so if, and there's 10, so I guess, I don't know, if you enter in nothing the most, um, and then there's like maybe some ties, maybe you're like you're mixed to something, I don't know. Uh, next page. The heroes and their Bakugan. When it comes to Bakugan, there are two types of brawlers. Some respect their Bakugan and work to protect them. Others try to exploit Bakugan for profit or power. Brawlers who fight the evil forces that use their Bakugan for personal gain are all heroes. Leading the charge are Dan Kuzo and his friends. In this section, you'll learn more about about them and their incredible Bakugan partners. Alrighty. Alright, so Dan Kuzo, let's do this. So, oh, hit the tripod there. Let's, okay, so Faction Pyrus, Bakugan, Dragonoid, Cyndius, and Kalyon, but they don't mention that here, even though it is released in 2020 and they gave out Kalyon a while ago, so. I don't know. I, I did take a quick look at this um, earlier. And they don't mention all their Bakugan. Or if they do, they might mention them later. So, <sighs> Alright. So, Dan's life has been connected to Bakugan since he was born. The day of the Great Collision. Twelve years later, on his birthday, he discovered Drago. The first Bakugan on Earth. Ever since then, he has been training and battling Bakugan. Earning the reputation as the world's number one brawler. Bakugan players from all over seek out Dan and try to bat and try to beat him. That's that's just fine with Dan. He loves a challenge. And while he doesn't think of himself as a leader, he is encouraging and supportive to other brawlers. As a result, he has become the natural leader in the fight to protect Bakugan. Oh, on the bottom. Uh, Dan really loses a battle, but when he does, he drowns his sorrows in a pile of cheeseburgers. That's for sure. Alright. So, Drago, or Dragonoid, partner, Dan Cuso. Uh, noble, powerful, wise. Drago is all of these things and more. A Pyrus Dragonoid, he only has vague memories of his life before the Great Collision. He has always felt a deep connection to other Bakugan, and he will do whatever it takes to protect his fellow creatures. When Drago chose Dan to be his Bakugan partner, he chose wisely. Dan has a good heart as well as a forceful battle style that perfectly matches Drago's powerful attacks. When Drago and Dan battle together, they're almost impossible to defeat. On the bottom, uh, it says Hyper Dragonoid. Drago connected to the energy of the Corsail and evolved into Hyper Dragonoid, a ferocious massive Bakugan. When the battle ended, Hyper Dragonoid became Drago once again. Alright, Cyndius. Bakugan have feelings too. Partner, Dan Cuso. The strong warrior Bakugan resembles a knight in armor. He is loyal to those he trusts, but he isn't afraid to play by his own rules either. Cyndius first partnered with a boy named Marco, who turned out to be a bully. Marco challenged Dan to a duel. To a duel? Oh, I didn't know they play they played Yu-Gi-Oh or anything to get him. I thought they just brawled, but all right. But apparently they had a duel instead of a brawl. Interesting. They must have edited that episode then, when they uh when they realized they put in the the wrong card game. Interesting. Hmm. With Dan using his uh his green eyes. What is it? What are they? Green eyes? I think Drago has. Oh, do you say green eye? Green green eyes. Red dragon. Against uh. Against what? What would what would Cindy's be? I don't know. Not not Celtic guardian, but something else. Whatever. I don't know, put the comment in the comment section. What do you think, uh, if Cyndius was a Yu-Gi-Oh card or monster, what uh, Yu-Gi-Oh monster indoor card would he be? Because I know for Drago, I'm pretty sure just, you know, green eyes, red dragon would be fine. <laughs> uh, anywho. 
uh, yes, they had a duel, or, you know, a brawl, actually, and tried to order Sandius to attack Dan. Human and Bakugan are friends, Sandius told Marco. I will no longer fight this cowardly battle. He left Marco and has been partnered with Dan ever since. Let's see on the bottom. Sandius believes he is the best-looking Bakugan around. Oh, okay, he's sure for himself, isn't he? Best-looking Bakugan. I mean, he's not bad-looking. He has a nice diamond and everything, too, so... All right, well, here it lists all three of his. Uh, Winton's Bakugan, for some reason, but doesn't list Kellyon for Dan. I don't know. What's okay, so Winton Styles. We go stronger every day. Faction Ventus, Bakugan, or Trox, Lepithion, and Tertonium. Winton's a prankster, a tech head, and amazing brawler. Even though he jokes around a lot, he cares deeply for his Bakugan and his friends. Some might say he's a slacker hacker... And that's true, but his inventive solutions often save the day when his friends are in trouble. When Wenton's not training, battling, or inventing something, he likes to play pranks. Most of them get a lot of hits on the team's Langster channel. On his own birthday, he surprised Leo with a pie in the face. Ooh. He likes to he likes to surprise others, but doesn't like it when it happens to him. Yep. On the bottom. Wenton and Dan have been friends since the second grade. They met when Dan broke his hair handheld game system and went and fixed it with a paper clip and some glue and some gum I'm trying to turn around there if they're in the second grade what would they have been having second grade this, this is what technically back we got and they rebooted it for what 28 like the end of 2018 beginning of 2019 so second grade See, so what, 12 years, so 2007, they were born, 2006, 2007. Um, oh, boy. And see what you're in the second, 2016. So what, I guess a 3DS or something, then? A 3DS or a DSi, I guess. Would be a handheld or maybe a PSP or something, I don't know. But the paperclip and gum, that that's that's something I would like to see someone do. Alright. Uh partner. So trucks, partner, Winton Styles. Alright. He might look like a raging dinosaur, but trucks is usually thoughtful and strategic in battle. If he starts to lose or is in pain though, uh he becomes a rampaging beast. Trucks and Winton train hard and in battle they work together like a well oiled machine. Bottom. Hyper trucks. Bigger, fiercer, sharper trucks. Truck becomes all of these things when he evolves into hyper trucks. Alright, and we got Lupithion in this page. Partner Wind and Styles. What's that howl? It must be Lupithion, a werewolf like Bakugan. His sharp claws and teeth strike fear into the hearts of his opponents. Like other werewolves, he becomes even stronger when the full moon is out. The Pythion appeared to Winton on the brawler's birthday. The two got to know each other quickly when Colonel Tripp gained control of Drago and Trox. The Pythion joined Dan's uh, Bakugan, Sandius, in a ferocious battle. Under the light of a full moon, the Pythion gained enough power to save the night. Tertonium partner, Winton Styles. This tortoise-like Bakugan is patient and wise. An excellent strategic, he helps Winton plan attacks. He's not much of a fighter. Instead, he uses his power to heal Trox and other Bakugan, other Bakugan Lupithion during battle. All right, now we have Leah Venegas. Bakugan Brawl. Faction Heos. Bakugan, Pegatrix, Gorthion, and Cabo. Leah's artistic eye helped catapult the team to Linkster superstardom. She brings her creativity to the Bakugan battlefield, where she combines her instincts and skill to cast all the right moves. Leah has no patience for bullies and haters. She'll quickly put them in their place. When she seems when she sees someone who needs help, she jumps right in. Leah's mom is a TV news reporter, which might be why Leah is good with the camera. Yeah. Alright. 
Pegatrix partner Leo Venegas. Overwhelming an, uh, an opponent with power isn't a beautiful strategy. Pegatrix told Leo the first time they battled together. Miss Bakugan does have some powerful attacks, but she prefers healing her teammates over using brute force. Pegatrix appeared to Leah inside a white flower. She ch chose a human partner with a good heart, but she doesn't always agree with Leah's actions and is sure to tell her so. You're hyper Pegatrix. In her evolved form, Pegatrix becomes a majestic steed with lightning speed and massive wings. Gorthion. Partner, Leah Venegas. Am I going bananas? I don't know. In the heat of a battle, the huge gorilla-like Bakugan will let out a mighty roar and lash out in a fury at his opponents. Cool-headed Leah is the perfect partner for this hot-tempered Bakugan. She can calm him down and guide him to victory. He might look fierce, but a kind heart beats inside that massive chest. He will throw himself in harm's way in the blink of an eye to protect Leah. You have Kubo. One of the better Bakugan in the show, but doesn't get enough screen time, unfortunately. Alright, partner, Leo Venegas. This tiny teddy bear-like Bakugan might look cute, but he is actually a trash-talking little tough guy. After she and her friends returned from the maze, Leah found Kubo's Bakugan ball in her hair. Kubo didn't want to partner with anybody but Leah, but... But Leah showered him with unconditional love and cracked his hard shell. He agreed to be your partner. Kobo and Leah both share a wicked sense of humor. They quickly bonded by watching bloopers of their videos, especially the ones involving Dan and Winton. The prank videos or something. Bloopers or something. Alright. Shun Kazami. For all my friends, for my Bakugan, and for myself, I will fight. Faction, Aquas. Bakugan, Hydros, Fade Ninja, and Vicerox. Shun Kazami traveled all the way from Japan to Los Volmos to try out for the team. At first, Dan didn't know what to make of this serious boy dressed in a crisp blue suit, but Shun quickly impressed everyone, not just with his battle skills, but because he understood the importance of working with a team. Mature and mysterious on the outside, Shun has a passion for Bakugan that burns on the inside. When his father ordered him to come back to Japan, Shun battled Colonel Chip to show his dad that just what he and his Bakugan could accomplish together. Shun lived alone when he first came to Los Fomos, but now he lives with Winton and his family. Alright, Hydros. Partner, Shun Kazami. Hydros resembles a lion with sharp claws, sharp fangs, and an intimidating roar. He has cat-like agility on the battlefield. While Shun is quiet and calm, Hydros is aggressive and fierce. Even though they are opposite, their styles work well together in battle. Hydros helps fuel Shun's competitive nature, and Shun helps Hydros use his moves more effectively. Hydros enjoys playing video games with Winton's little brother. Hyper Hydros. Sharper, stronger, faster. Hydros becomes a more powerful version of himself when he evolves. Alright. So other back gone. Fade Ninja, partner Shin Kazami. Tall muscled and armored, this Bakugan looks like a human warrior. Fade Ninja boasts some impressive battle moves, including Clone Army. When he uses it, dozens of copies of Fade Ninja appear on the battlefield. Fate Ninja wasn't always partnered with Shun. He was used to by Toshi, the bodyguard of Shun's father. Toshi came to Los Volmos to bring Shun back to Japan, and Shun called him to a battle. Hydros defeated Fate Ninja, and Toshi was so impressed with Shun's battling style that he gave him Fate Ninja as a gift. Vice Rocks. Partner, Shun Kazami. As it scuttles across the battlefield on its claws, you might think the Spekagon looks like a giant crab. Then you'll be amazed as it unleashes controlled, powerful attacks. Shun was also given Vice Rocks by Toshi, his father's bodyguard. The evil Colonel Trip challenged Shun to a battle so he could win Hydros from him. Toshi gave Shun Vice Rocks to help even up the sides, and Shun prevailed. Alright. 
Lightning, Faction, Darkest, Bekagun, Halicor, Artulian, Rip, and Phaedrus. When Dan discovered this cute stray bulldog near his home, he quickly became the mascot for the team. After all, everyone knows that cute dog videos get millions of hits on social media, right? But after Dan and his friends discovered Bakugan, something amazing happened. Lightning partnered with the Bakugan too, Halicor. Then he met another Bakugan, Artulian, Rip. Winton created a special collar for Lightning so that he can carry his Bakugan with him wherever he goes. Now he's more than a mascot, he's a valuable member of the team. Lightning is, a, is small, so he can get into places that others can't. And when trouble arises, he snaps into battle. Mode and brawls? It's up to battle mode and brawls. With his teammates. Sure, he might need a nap and a trade afterwards, but so does Dan. With them cheeseburgers. Uh, Lightning can talk. Lightning can't talk, uh, except in that one episode. Uh, just like other dogs, he communicates with barks, growls, and body language. Yeah, Bakugan, yeah, but he can talk, uh, with the Bakugan, which is interesting. Alright. Halcor, partner, Lightning. Lightning, put me in. Why would a ferocious dog with three heads, uh, choose an adorable French bulldog to be his Bakugan partner? Halcor was attracted to Lightning's animal nature, uh, figuring that another dog would understand him. Makes sense. Lightning is actually a little afraid of his Bakugan. He'll have to learn to be the alpha dog if he ever wants to get Halcor under control. In the meantime, though, Lightning doesn't hesitate to use Halcor and his friends are in trouble. Artulian, rip. Partner, Lightning. I am Artulian, pleased to make your acquaintance. I only appear in this show and do not have a physical toy form. Artulian resembles a noble knight with a powerful laser cannon on each shoulder. Because knights have laser cannons. Sure. Uh, even though he's mighty, he's always polite and tries to do the right thing. Artulian chose Lightning as his partner one day in the park. Immediately, Halcor challenged him to battle, then stared a rivalry and started a rivalry between the two Bakugan, Artulian, then then pranked Halcor, and Halcor got annoyed. But the two proved that they could work together when Magnus threatened their friends. And nothing on Phaedrus yet, but we'll get to her later. Alright, so key brawls. Dina's friends have had their skills tested in many brawls. Here are some that they'll never forget. Dan versus Magnus. Magnus had challenged Dan and Drago again and again and always lost. But one memorable day, Magnus showed up with renewed determination and a strange device on his arm. During the battle, Dan watched amazed as Magnus used the de device to evolve Nilius into a newer, stronger form. Nilius decimated Drago and Magnus finally defeated Dan because he cheated. This loss left Dan wondering how Magnus got the strange device, and a surprise visit from Magnus' little sister Emily hinted that Magnus was a pawn in a sinister game. Alright, now Trox versus Drago, Cyndius, and Gortheon. When Winton and Trox argued over Winton's prank videos, they made a deal. If Trox beat Drago, Cyndius, and Gortheon in a battle, he could leave Winton and find a new partner. Nobody thought Trox could win in a 3-1 battle, but Trox was confident. He had seen all of his friends' moves many times and knew exactly how to avoid receiving damage. When Trox's three opponent hit him with their best attacks, Trox used Rock Riser to make a huge hole in the ground while he hit his foes hit each other with their attacks and lost all their points. Trox may have won, but after Winton apologized, he agreed to remain his partner. All right here. Shunen Masato. When his cousin Masato came to bring Shun back to Japan, Shun was in shock. Torn by his decision dis dedicated torn by his dedication to the team and to and to his family, he didn't fight back when Masato attacked him attacked with, with his serpentines. But when Shun decided that staying with his new friends was the right thing to do, he battled Masato with all of his might. During the battle, he forged a strong connection with Hydrus. 
which caused his Bakugan to evolve. Hyper Hydros broke through the Serpentis' defense and finished him with barrage of Aquas attacks. Now the whole team versus Strata the Hunter, one of the best characters in the show because he's voiced by the Teletoon voice announcing guy. Uh, when a Bakugan named Phaedrus told the team that Bakugan were being captured, they agreed to help. She led them to a mansion in the mysterious place known as the Maze of Astoria. They or found the there they found Strata, the hunter, who was holding the captured Bakugan. The team brought out Drago, Gorthion, and Trox to battle Strata and his Krakilios, but battling in the maze was nothing like battling on Earth. Krakilios kept attacking and then hiding in the maze. Finally, Lightning sniffed out Krakilios and Phaedrus took down the Aquas Bakugan with a powerful Thunderbolt attack. That gave Phaedrus and Lightning the chance to free the captured Bakugan, but Strata and Krakilios attacked with Aquas Flash, setting the team and their Bakugan falling into the deep maze. Australia. The villains and their Bakugan. It looks like a family, more or less, but only those two are related to each other. Okay. Um, it happened so fast. As soon as kids discovered Bakugan, adults searched for ways to use Bakugan for their own gain, which is against, uh, if y'all remember, if I can find it. Right, which is against uh, the Bakugan code. Uh, to never do not not a season for bad or for profit or anything against their will. Uh, that's what that's what makes them villains because they're going against the code. All right. Uh, because these villains were born after before born before the Great Collision. Yes. They were born before the Great Collision. No, just these two. I don't think these guys, but these two definitely were. Yeah, okay. Uh, they had to find another sinister way to control them. Some villains work on their own, hunting for powerful Bakugan. Others work for corporations looking to make money from Bakugan, and the motives of some others remain a mystery. In this section, you'll meet them all. All right, Magnus Black. Interesting. I will crush them. Faction, Darkus, Bakugan, Nilius, Fangzor, and Weapon. Dan first met Magnus when the mysterious masked boy challenged him to a brawl on the street. Up until that point, Dan had been battling other brawlers for fun, but Magnus and his Darkus Nilius seemed deathly serious. This could change the fate of the world, Magnus told Dan. What Dan didn't know was that Magnus had agreed to work for AA Animus Incorporated, a shady corporation run by Philomena Dusk. Magnus doesn't know why Philomena is obsessed with defeating Dan Cuso, and he doesn't care. He's doing it because she has the technology to help his sick sister Emily. While Magnus might be brawling for noble reasons, his jealousy of Dan has turned his heart cold and dark. Emily says that Magnus is really good inside, but time will tell if that is still true. Alright, Nilius. Partner, Magnus Black. Does the fact that this Bakugan has two heads mean it is twice as dangerous as other Bakugan? Maybe when it evolves into the Nova form, but yeah. Uh, maybe not, but it does double Nilius' desire to destroy a, his opponents. Unlike other Bakugan, he doesn't care about winning, only about how much damage he can cause. Nilius only barely tolerates having Magnus as a partner, but likes to go rogue. This means Magnus has to work hard to keep his Bakugan in line, and the fact that each head has a different personality only makes it harder. Your Hyper Nilius. When Nilius evolves, he becomes bigger, stronger, and much harder to damage. Uh, Fangzor. Partner, Magnus Black. The most dangerous feature of this snake-like Bakugan is a sharp fangs which can inject deadly poison into his opponents. The sneaky snake is a favorite Bakugan of many villains, but Magnus' 
Darkest Fangs Room might be the creepiest one of all, even though he barely uses any backing on Pup May, but nearly is for some reason, I don't know. Uh, Webbin. Partner, Magnus Black. What has eight legs and loves to battle? Webbin. This Bakugan looks like an enormous tarantula and fits right in with Magnus's stable of spooky creatures. They have Strata the Hunter. Uh, they only give him one Bakugan, even in the show he has like a whole heck of a bunch. Um, I don't know if that's because he just captured them real quick or something. But, anywho. Uh, now your Bakugan can join my little collection. Faction, Aquas, Bakugan, Kikilios. Strata used to hunt wild game all over the world. When he heard about Bakugan, he developed a new mission to use his hunting technique to crack to track down and capture Bakugan. When he succeeds, he drains the energy with a special weapon he invented, leaving them uh, as lifeless as statues. Then he displays them as trophies in his mansion. Strata is one of the most despicable villains Dan and his friends have encountered. He treats Bakugan like objects to collect and dominate. <laughs> Not as the majestic creatures with feelings that they are. Kerkelios. Controlled by Strata the Hunter. <laughs> this Bakugan resembles a mighty sea serpent and is just a sea serpent. I, I, mean, I, I would say a giant squid rather than a, a sea serpent, but alright. Because a serpent is like, a sea serpent is just like a really big snake, right? This is more of a uh, my opinion, like a, a kraken. Crack in, if you will. Or a giant squid or something. But, um. Because, you know. Like, okay. Anywho. Uh, and it's just as frightening as anything you might read about in Legends. Krakilios has an advantage in water and can silently sneak up on an opponent surrounding them with all eight of its legs. Even though. No, like there's like one, two, three, four, five. I count five, but whatever. Um, when Strata uses Krakilios inside the maze, it can disappear and reappear to make surprise attacks. Tip If you want to take down Krakilios, try attacking from the sky. China Riot. Please don't be a meanie to my Maxator faction, Ventus. Bakugan, Maxator. This spoiled six-year-old girl may be cute, but there's nothing cute about her battle skills. She's as brave as they come and as a will as strong as her tough Bakugan, Maxator Ultra. Oh, they specifically call him an Ultra in this. Interesting. Um, when China challenges another brawler, it's not for kicks, it's for cash. Uh, she's been hired by A, Animus Incorporated. She's happy to battle to keep up her lavish lifestyle, which includes a personal butler, <coughs> Jenkins. Mother, 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 mother Jenkins. <sighs> and a private helicopter. Alright, Maxator. Partner, China Wright. Part monster, part dinosaur. Yeah, sure, a dinosaur. Let's um, let's go with that. Uh, even though I would say he's like a minotaur, so I would say part bull. But you know, that's all I'm saying. Uh, no matter what Maxator looks like to you, <laughs> okay. Um, the most important thing to know is that he is a powerful wild beast. He doesn't say much during battle, but he doesn't have to. His mighty fist and sharp sword. Do the talking for him. Not really a sword. They're like little things on his on his arms. Not really swords, but okay. Uh, this big brute is happy to take orders from China. In a battle, he'd rather be told what to do than have to think or strategize. Marco Cezanello. That's the last name. Uh, he might not be as sinister as the other villains, but Marco has caused plenty of trouble for Dan and his friends. It started when he took over Pinpoint Park and wouldn't let other Bakugan 
or other brawlers uh, play there. He defended the park with his uh, back again, Cindius. You have to do whatever I say, like like it or not, Mar Marco told Cindius. But Marco had betrayed his partnership with the Bakugan. Partners don't order each other around. They work together to create strategies. Cindius left Marco that day to become dance partner. Then we have Durin Dane. Don't tell me what to do. Dana went in first and met Durin when they thought they had been hired to teach him how to train Bakugan. Durin challenged them to a battle with his Bakugan, Nobilius. Uh, the battle took place in a mysterious underground cavern where the rules of the game had completely changed. The battle ended when Nobilius confided to Drago that he didn't want to obey Durin, but he had to. He let Dan, Winton, and their Bakugan escape. Later, Dan and Winton met Durin again. He confessed that he was an actor who had been hired to battle them the first time by their friend Benton Dusk. Durin battled them again this time for fame, but the only but he only proved that he is a better actor than he is a brawler. Nobilius is an enormous Bakugan that resembles a griffin, but a mythological creature that is half eagle, half lion. In my opinion, one of the one of the best pirates Bakugan in the game. Philomena Dusk. The head of AA Animus Incorporated uh, has been has sent has spent a fortune trying to defeat Dan and his friends. But why? They aren't quite sure. But they are learning about this flashy villain. According to her younger brother Benton Dusk, Philomena has been collecting data on the heroes to further her research into the Bakugan phenomenon. She has a team of scientists working to unlock the secrets of Bakugan, which she hopes to profit from. Which is, um, if y'all remember again, uh, I passed it here. Nope. Not where in the heck is it? There we go. Which is, uh, against the Bakugan code, which clearly says, never try to profit from your Bakugan, which is what she is trying to do. She's mean, she's smart, and she's ruthless. <laughs> the Bakugan evolution device she had implemented on Magnus's arm pushed the boy to the limits of his endurance, but Philomena didn't care. When she wants results, she'll do anything to get them, no matter what the cost. <laughs> the exit team, kind of only shown in like one episode, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> This team of kid brawlers might have been Philomena's most brilliant idea. At first, they were carefully selected for their style and personality to create videos that would become more popular in line than Dan. Sorry, my cut, camera cut out for a second there. Um, and here, I'll just start at the second paragraph because I can't remember where it was. Uh, the team may have failed, but Philomena kept the concept. She reformed the exit team with the villains who called... Who, who had already proven themselves against in battle. Magnus, China Riot, uh, Strata the Hunter, A, the leader of the exit team, and Curin, a cheating brawler who had secretly tapped Dan and his friends so he could learn their battle moves. The upgraded exit team succeeded where the first team failed. They staged disasters and then recorded themselves saving the day. They quickly became heroes and made the and made the dance team look like bad guys. Green and mean. Didn't his friends encounter the first leader of the exit A several times? Uh, the first time, he was using his Bakugan Mantinoid to rob Dan's favorite burger joint. Carnal Trip. Deploy Pandox Punch. Faction Chaos Bakugan Pandox. He may look like a military man, but Colonel Trip doesn't answer to the government. He answers to Philomena Dusk. He's the number one adult Bakugan brawler, and he leads a team of other adults enhanced by AA Animus' uh, technology to become the better brawlers. 
Trip is armed with some of the most sinister technology a Animus has developed, a device that latches onto a Bakugan and allows Trip to control it. He even used the device to control Winton. Pandox, controlled by Colonel Trip. On its own, Pandoc, Panda, on, on its own, this panda-like Bakugan delivers its most powerful attacks with honor, in the spirit of Bakugan competition. But when controlled by the evil Colonel Trip, this Pandox becomes a ruthless, punishing beast. Dana's friends first... Oh, I forgot to put a space here. Forgot to, that's an error. I forgot to put a space because not friends first is not one word. Stan his friends first encountered Pandox when they were sent a video of the Bakugan being captured. They traveled into the woods to find it, only to learn they had fallen into a trap by trip. Trap by trip. Trap by trip. Say that ten times fast. Then they tried to save Pandox, but could not free it from Trip's control. Masato Kazami. Shun, you are helpful. You're you're a helpful research subject. Shun's older cousin Masato works for Shun's father in the Kazami International Holdings. Uh, Mr. Kazami let Shun live in Las Vamos with his new friends for a while, but then decided he wanted his son back to extract all the research Shun learned about Bakugan in the core cell. He sent Misato to bring Shun back. Misato is cold and calculating. He doesn't. He does what he is told without emotion for the good of the Kazami holding. To him, obeying the family is more important than whether what he is being asked to do is right or wrong. Serpentes, controlled by Misato Kazami. Hmm. Controlled by. Yeah, they keep saying controlled by. They also say adults or anyone born before the Great Collision can't uh, be partners with Bakugan, right? Get I don't see any device that he's controlling Serpentes with. Maybe I missed that in the show. I don't know, but I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> Serpentes is no ordinary snake. This Bakugan has a serpent's body as well as large wings. In battle, Serpentees can be silent and sneaky. Masato loves to be in control, but Serpentees is unpredictable and often disobeys his brawler. Masato doesn't mind because sometimes his Bakugan surprise attacks are more effective than anything he could plan himself. A new dimension. One by one, challengers faced Dan and his team, and one by one, Dan, Leah, Winton, Shun, and Lightning defeated them. But then the game changed. The friends found themselves in a strange new place. There, they faced new challenges and a mysterious Bakugan more dangerous than any they had ever seen before. With the fate of all Bakugan in the balance, they battled like never had before. Their own fate was in the balance, too. It looked like they might be trapped in this new dimension forever. Ah, uh, here's Phaedrus, all right. Benton Dusk. I've been researching Bakugan for a long time. Benton, the brother of Philomena Dusk, is a wealthy genius who has been studying Bakugan ever since they first appeared. When the team met him, he told them that his mission was to protect Bakugan from people who want to exploit them. Like his sister. But why is he so focused on linking all the core cells together? And why is he so interested in the maze? Then his friends began to doubt Benton after Durandane told them what, told them that it was Benton who hired him to battle Dan and Winton. Can Benton still be trusted or is Dan Durin linked to them? The heroes aren't sure, but one thing is certain. It was Benton who first introduced them to the mysterious dimension known as the maze of Astoria. Phaedrus. When Strata the Hunter captured Bakugan and kept them in a prison in the maze, Phaedrus escaped through a portal. A dragon-like Bakugan emerged in the headquarters of Benton Dust and asked for his help and Benton called on Dan and his team. Phaedrus doesn't brawl with Benton, but she found a new home with him. <laughs> 
We found with him once she helped the team free captured friends. Eventually, Phaedrus decides to team up with Lightning instead. The maze. Nice try. Is it another dimension? Another planet? A hidden kingdom on Earth? Jen and his friends aren't exactly sure, but there are a few things they know for certain. The rules of Bakugan battles don't work the same in the maze as they do on Earth. Gates filled with a swirling rainbow light led from one section of the maze to the next. Their, their Bakugan have vague memories of the maze. Uh, the team and their Bakugan first entered the maze when Benton Desk asked them to help Phaedrus rescue her friends from Strata. They entered through a gate in Benton's headquarters. The team freed the Bakugan, but Strata's Krakilios hit them with an aqua's flash, sending them falling into an abyss. Separated from the gate uh, that would get them back home, they wandered around the maze, searching for a way out. They traveled through strange lands, some filled with fluffy cow clouds, others with jungle plants. They finally found a way out, but not before they encountered a mysterious, powerful back home with dangerous powers. Tigo. Speaking of. Nice artwork from Tico here if, when he's not covered in all that shadows. Like in the show. All right. The starkly mysterious Bakugan first appeared to Drago and the other Bakugan in a dream. Or was it? Soon after, when Dan and his friends were lost in the maze, they encountered him again. Tico first appeared in the shadows, controlling Bakugan and forcing them to battle Dan and the others. Dan called these zombie-like Bakugan Bakuzan. Then, when the team reached the center of the maze, Tico revealed his true form, a dragon-like creature with wings and glowing eyes. Uh, besides being able to control other Bakugan, Tico attacks with black slimy substance that harms his opponent and can prevent them from moving. He can also shapeshift. Tico was the most powerful Bakugan that the team had ever encountered, and Drago could only defeat him after evolving to Hyper Dragonoid. During the battle, Drago had a memory flash. He had encountered this Bakugan before. Did Tico have something to do with the Great Collision? It looks like Tico is one piece of a puzzle that still needs to be solved. <laughs> the Core Cell When they reached the center of the maze, Dan and his friends discovered a gold glowing ball of light, the Core Cell. The Core Cell is somehow connected to Bakugan and their powers. Being close to the Core Cell is what caused Drago to evolve into Hyper Dragonoid for the first time. Once the team escaped from the maze, word got about the core cell and everybody wanted a piece of it. It entered up in the greedy hands of Philomena Dusk. What will happen to Bakugan now that the source of their power is under her control? Evolving Bakugan When Drago evolved in the maze, Dan realized that the key to evolving Bakugan was the core cell. When he and his friends got back home, they all tried to reconnect with the core cell to get their Bakugan to evolve. They trained and trained, but nothing seemed to work. Wonton even invented a device to track the core cell, but he learned that relying on a device to evolve this Bakugan was not a good plan. Uh, the friends soon learned that connecting to the core cell had nothing to do with strategy and everything to do with heart. Shun evolved Hydros in the heart of the battle with his cousin Misato when Shun gained confidence in himself and became determined not to let his family exploit Bakugan to for profit. He connected with the Corso. When Leo realized that she would always be connected to the memory of her father, Pegatrix evolved. Trucks evolved after Winton gained the strength to break away from Colonel Tripp's control. And Dan finally evolved Trigo. Again, during a battle with Durandain. Now that the heroes uh, know to uh, know how to evolve their Bakugan, they're stronger than ever and ready to protect the Bakugan from evil forces. The mysterious gold Bakugan. Oh, cool! That was a nice subtle work of um, looks like a dragon over there. Help us, Leah. 
Uh, a beautiful golden Bakugan first appeared to Leo when the Bakugan on Earth became sick. She led Leo to a site of toxic waste and Leo realized that the pollution was making the Bakugan sick. She appeared again in a dream to Drago and the other Bakugan. They dreamed of a strange planet in a battle with a dark, shape-shifting Bakugan who was after the Corcel. In the dream, the Golden Bakugan told them that to save the Corcel, they would all need to go into a deep sleep. When Dan and his friends were lost in the maze, this Golden Bakugan kept an eye on them. Like Tico, she is another clue to the origin of the Bakugan, and Dan has feelings that they will meet her again. Let's go! Evil forces may want to control Bakugan, but Din and his team of heroes are always working to stop them. Are you ready to join them, Brawler? Train with your Bakugan and learn how to work together. Show your Bakugan respect, and you will become an unstoppable team. Then, when the team calls for your help, you'll be ready to brawl. And that is the official character handbook. <laughs> yeah. Um, so pretty much it kind of wraps up, uh, what's been going on in the show so far. Um, not entirely, but just a little bit. Um, for those who haven't watched it. Um, I suppose it's a good, it's, it, it's not a bad book. Um, uh, but if you've watched the, the, the TV show, you wouldn't really need it unless, like me, you get it just for simply collecting it. Um, yeah, uh, so write in the comments, in the comments down below, um, right, if you have this book, if you plan on getting it, what your thoughts about it are, um, because I know, I know this is available on Amazon.ca, uh, as of this moment, because I did pre-order this on it, uh, I'm not sure if it is in stores yet, um, as of recording it. Is January the seventh, uh, and upload is going to is uh, should be the ninth. Um, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, um, uh, share if uh, you think someone would get a, would like this. Um, subscribe for more and turn on the bell notification so you know when my next video is up. And until. Next time, bye people.